Hi everyone and welcome to your reading or your commentary for lesson number 36. My holiness envelops everything I see. And I really enjoy this lesson because of this second sentence. You are holy because your mind is a part of God's. And because you are holy, your sight must be holy as well. And so once again, this lesson is helping us to realize we are not our bodies. We are not our personalities. We are that part of God. We are that aspect of the divine. And what we have to remember very, very carefully is this, that God created you. You did not create it. Now, it has given you all of its qualities. You know, love made you loving, kindness made you kind, uh, free will gave you free, or freedom made you free, and so forth and so on. It gave you all of those qualities like itself, because love always creates like itself. And so that's really important to remember here. Love always creates like itself. Then it goes forward to say, uh, sinlessness means without sin. You cannot be without sin a little. You are sinless or not. And I love when the course gets really black and white like this because it is just making a direct point, which I like to think of it this way. You can't be a little bit pregnant. Either you are pregnant or you're not. There, there's no in between there. It's either, yes, I'm pregnant. No, I'm not pregnant. And that's what it says. Either you are sinless or you're not. Either you are or you're not. There's none of this gray zone. Because remember, the truth of you is sinless. The truth of you has done nothing wrong. The truth of you is the light, the love, the life. You know, it's all those things. Then it goes forward to say, if your mind is part of God's, you must be sinless or a part of his mind would be sinful. Now, remember, it's telling us, you know, the attribute of God is God is love. So there is no part of God that does not think without love, which is actually what sin means to miss the mark. Well, what's the only mark that we can miss? We don't think with love. God always is thinking with love. That's the only way God can think. Then it says, your sight is related to his holiness, not to your ego, and therefore not to your body. So this just saying, it, your sight what you see is determined by, remember, who are we thinking with? Who are we wanting to see with? And if we see with the eyes of love, then we're going to be seeing a joyful, happy, peaceful world. But if we see through the eyes of the ego, then we're going to see a dank, dark, fearful, violent world. And so, but your sight is determined by who you're viewing it with. So then at the top, it says, you know, my holiness envelops everything I see. Well, what does envelop really mean? Envelop means to encompass, to encase, to, you know, basically to surround. And so anything that we see, our holiness, our love encompasses. We can encompass it with love or we can encompass it with fear. That's your choice. You always have that choice. What am I going to look upon this with? Am I going to look upon this with love or am I going to look upon this with fear? And so this lesson is really helping us to say, okay, my holiness, which is the truth of who I am, envelops everything I see. So I have to be willing to see with that holiness, to see with that light in whatever way, however that's going to come for you. And that's what this lesson is helping us to realize. It's helping us, number one, I am holy because I am an aspect of God and all things that God thinks of and has created are holy like himself. Then it's helping us to realize, okay, my sight has nothing to do with my ego. It has nothing to do with my ego because I can see with love. I don't have to see with the ego's eyes or with the ego's perceptual filter on my eyes. Okay, and so this is a really wonderful lesson to help us begin to see with true vision, to see the light within everyone and everything. So thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in lesson number 37.